Hello everyone, and welcome to my 2017 bookish Academy Awards video thing. What am I doing with my hands? <laughs> if you've been subscribed for at least a year, you would know that I did this last year. It's basically just a book tag to talk about the books that you read in the pre like the past year, with the premise that all of the categories are like Oscar categories, you know, like best actor, best actress, that kind of stuff. And I'll link the original video down below if you want to listen to the questions and if you want to watch that. I did this last year and I really liked it because I think it's a really good way to like wrap up your year of reading in a really fun way. So I'm doing it again. So I'm going to try not to mention any rereads that I did this year and only talk about books that were new to me, like not necessarily new books, but just books that were new to me, you know, like books that I read for the first time. The only exception is if it's a book that I haven't read in a long time. For school I had to read Alice in Wonderland and Anne of Green Gables, both of which I've read before, but I hadn't read them in a while, so I might count stuff like that, but I'm gonna try not to mention those. Also I might be skipping some categories because I didn't have anything to say for them, so if you know this tag and you notice that something is missing, that's why, it's just that I didn't have anything good to say for it, because um, I didn't read anything with that specific category, I guess. But I think I kept most of them for the most part. I think I also added one or two of my own categories because there's something that I wanted to talk about that wasn't included in the categories in the original tag, so, you know, I just added one of my own. I'm basically just using this as an outline to talk about my year of reading, and I'm also going to try not to repeat too many books, because if there's one thing I hate about the Oscars, it's when one film wins every single award. But again, if there's a book that I really like, chances are there's more than one thing that I liked about it, so there's a couple books that come up multiple times, but I tried to at least give a little bit of variety. But anyway, that's enough talking and rambling from me, let's just get into this. So the first one is Best Actor, aka Best Male Protagonist. And for this one, I'm gonna say Quoth from The Name of the Wind. When I read The Name of the Wind, I didn't love Quoth, I was like, he's kind of annoying, kind of arrogant, all that kind of stuff. Like, that's kind of the opinion a lot of people have of him, but then when I read Wise Man's Fear, I realized that he's kind of supposed to be that way, because he's telling his own story, right? So if you're telling a story about yourself, you want to make yourself seem cool, and he's not necessarily a re super reliable narrator, but he's still really interesting. He's one of the most interesting characters that I've read overall this year, but um, yeah, I'm going to choose him for this one. Next is Best Actress, which, as you can guess, is Best Female Protagonist. So when I read this one, the first one that popped into my head was Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables, but like I said, it was a reread, so it's not like it was really a new book to me, but she is one of my favorite female protagonists of all time. But besides her, in like books that I read for the first time this year, I really loved Aza from Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. She was just a very, very interesting protagonist, just because you are so inside her head in this book, and just watching her go through her thought spirals, and she's just very dynamic and, and like relatable in a way, although even if you don't have, you know, OCD or obsessive thought spirals, you're still able to kind of relate to her and some of her struggles and stuff. Look, if I can find a character in a contemporary novel that I actually like, that's a pretty big accomplishment because generally I find the protagonists of contemporaries to be very annoying, but I really like Daisa, so I couldn't just pick one female protagonist um, because I just love a lot of them. I'm also gonna say Miriam from A Thousand Splendid Sons, and I, I also like Layla from this book as well, but I really liked Miriam just because I felt so bad for her the entire time, because she just kind of got a crap life. They both had pretty bad lives, to be fair. Yeah, both of these women were both were just very dynamic and interesting and heartbreaking to read about. I think out of the two, Miriam was my favorite, so I'm gonna go with her. Next is Best Costume Design, which is the best book cover. I have a couple for this one. One I'm gonna say Uprooted by Naomi Novik because it's just a really cool looking fantasy cover. Um, it's like really intricate, there's lots of little details in it. Um, it's just really cool looking. The other one I'm going to say is On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher because if nothing else, at least it has a pretty cover going for it. More on that later. <laughs> Next is Best Supporting Actor and Actress, which is the best male and female sidekicks, which I'm going to take as side characters. So for best male side character, I'm going to go with Raphael from The Young Elites. He was my favorite character in that entire series. I loved him so much. I don't even remember why exactly I liked him so much, because it's been a while since I read the books. Like, I read them closer to the beginning of the year, but I just remember being obsessed with him more than any other character in that series. But for this one, I'm going to go with Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Jupiter from Sailor Moon, because they're like a three-way tie for my favorite Sailor Scouts. And I just read the first volume of the manga of this year. I love Sailor Moon, and they're my favorites. I think Sailor Jupiter is my favorite, though, so I'm going to go with her, Makoto, my fave. Next is Best Original Screenplay, and for this one I'm again going to go with Uprooted by Naomi Novik. It's just a very interesting fantasy world, it's very different, um, I really like the whole idea of like a forest being alive, the magic system is also pretty cool, yeah, I just really like that one. The next one is Best Adapted Screenplay, which is Best Book to Movie Adaptation. Uh, turns out I didn't see very many book to movie adaptations, if any, this year. I googled it and I was going through the list and like I just haven't seen any of them. There's a couple that I really want to see, like Murder on the Orient Express and Wonder, 
um, but I just haven't gotten around to seeing them yet. The only one that I guess you could maybe technically count as a book to movie adaptation is Wonder Woman because it's based off of a comic originally. I don't know if the specific storyline was but you know but yeah that's a very very loose connection there so I don't really know if it counts. Next is best animated feature or you know the book that you think would work best in an animated format. For this one I'm going to give the same answer that I think I gave last year and that is the Amulet graphic novel series. This would be great for an animated version because one it's already in like a drawn cartoon format. Secondly it's just a really cool concept and a really cool idea that I think would work really well in a cartoon um, whether it's like a TV series or a movie. It's just a very cool fantasy world that I think would just be really interesting. I'd be very interested to see it in that format. I think it'd be really really cool. I can't I have no other adjectives other than cool and interesting apparently so you know. Best director or a writer that you discovered for the first time. For me this one's gonna be Patrick Rothfuss because I mean he, like I knew of him like I knew he wrote these books I hadn't read any of his books yet so I did and they're so good he's such a talented amazing writer and I'm very excited for the next you know King Killer Chronicle book and just for the rest of his writing. He just has a way of writing fantasy that doesn't make it too complicated like it's descriptive kind of and beautiful but like not overly descriptive like some fantasy can be and it's also funny like there's really funny moments and just like sarcastic dialogue and it's just it's really great. Now the next category is best visual effects which in the original tag means best action in a book but I didn't have any answer for that so I'm changing this one to mean best graphic novel that I read this year because I read a ton of graphic novels. Like I said I really like the Amulet series Sailor Moon I also read, but I actually really like the Archie reboot that they did this year. I've talked about it before. I don't know if it's called The New Riverdale or if it's called what it's called really. It's just a new updated adaptation of like Archie comics. I can't tell if I really liked it because the art was really good or because like the story was really interesting or just because it was so much better than Riverdale. It was an Archie reboot that was actually faithful to the characters and to the story and just everything like that. But yeah, the art was great, like I said. The story was interesting and the characters didn't feel out of character. And I've only read three, the first three volumes or whatever, like the first three collections of it so far. And I'm excited to read the fourth one because I think it's out and I want to read it. I've been a huge fan of Archie comics since I was a little kid, so they have a very special place in my heart and Riverdale's starting to ruin it for me, but these, these reboots brought it back. <laughs> they were just able to update the stories and the characters, but in a way that still stayed true to the originals. Next is best short film, which is best novella or short book. And I, I didn't read a ton of actual short stories this year, the only thing that would really count is the short stories in Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, which is this horror anthology that I read this year. My favorite stories were Hide and Seek by Megan Shepard and M by Stefan Bachman. There's a lot of really good stories in here, but those two are definitely my favorite, so I'm gonna go with, I guess, those two stories. The next is Best Picture, which is the best standalone that you read. Once again, I gotta give a shout out to Turtles All the Way Down because this book is so good. It was really heartfelt and interesting and deep and just... Uh, it was just like relatable in a way, but like not like a hashtag relatable, you know, like it was actually just like so enjoyable to read. I recommend everybody read this please, it's so good. And I'm also gonna say Uprooted by Naomi Novik, I know I've mentioned it a bunch already, but it was just such a good book and one of the best standalones that I read this year. And lastly we have Best Documentary, which is the best nonfiction book that you read this year. For this one I'm gonna say Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This book made me laugh out loud so many times. It's essentially kind of like a memoir and just like an anecdotal book about this woman's life and just events from it and like it talks about mental illness and mental health and all that kind of stuff. It's funny and it's relatable and it's just really great. I totally recommend you read it. So that's it for the tag and then I just want to talk about overall my favorite and least favorite books of the year um, just to kind of wrap it up a little bit. So just so we end on a positive I'll start with my least favorite books of the year. One of them is On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. This was probably the most disappointing book of the year for me. I was really looking forward to reading this. I've wanted to read it since Carrie put it out since I really love her videos and her as a person and everything. Um, but the book just wasn't great. Um, it just felt kind of amateurish. I I don't know. I feel bad criticizing it now because obviously it is her first book but there was just parts of it that I was like how did the editor not catch this or not you know fix this. The magic elements were weird. Some of the characters motives didn't make sense and like the whole um, problem driving the plot didn't make sense either and I don't know it just wasn't great. Additionally another book that I read this year that I didn't like is it a book? It's more of a short story. It was uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I had to read it for school and it was just so boring. I feel like I've had a lot of books I had to read for school or like short stories I had to read for school this year that I just didn't like. But that's okay. I mean it was obviously a really well written thing because it's like literature and all that's in the canon and everything but I just didn't enjoy it personally. I find it super boring and super dry and I just never want to read it again. Nah. But my favorite books that I read this year, let's get to that because that's more exciting. <laughs> Probably two of my favorite books that I read. I mean, Uprooted is up there and Turtles All the Way Down because I talked about them as my favorite standalones and I really loved them this year. But I also really loved Name of the Wind and the King Killer Chronicle series that I read this year, which I also talked about a ton in this. Yeah, I think that kind of wraps up my year. I mean, there's a lot of books that I didn't mention, but 
kind of, they were more in the middle, I was more ambivalent on them, I guess. Let me know what you guys read this year down in the comments, let me know your favorites, your least favorites, just interesting stuff that you read that's not very popular that you want to recommend to me, I'm all ears. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with another video. Bye!